This show is brought to you by listeners like you. Support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Talking with guys with uh, talking with a lot of guys uh, around re- around wrestling. It's not just indie wrestling anymore, guys. It's uh, um, guys uh, working around it or on TV. Sometimes in other countries, like our guest today. But uh, in the meantime, please check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to the Indie Mayhem Show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and video versions over on the YouTube and the Facebook. And you never know when we're going to pop up with a Facebook Live with somebody that uh, we got the interview. Uh, like is the case today if you're joining us live and following that Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page. And of course, please support everything we're doing at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Sometimes we get a little bit extra content uh, in there. Sometimes uh, secret stories from... From, uh, some of our interviewees that we include on Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold at the five dollar pocky level. It's five dollars a month. Thank you so much. Everybody supports us. So I had the the fortune to uh, uh, meet this fellow uh, uh, a couple months ago at IWC. He is Sam Adonis on the line with me right now, killing it down there in CMLL in New Mexico, and uh, and just just absolutely great. He's a Pittsburgh native, so Pittsburgh proud. For that, and we we talked to uh, his dad a couple of uh, episodes ago. We'll get into that as well. How you doing down there, Sam? I am doing great. I'm enjoying the the hot sun here in Mexico City, watching some All Japan Pro Wrestling from the '90s as I speak to you. <laughs> between between you and your father, uh, remind me that you live in warm climates. As the snow's raining down on my head up back here in Pittsburgh, a uh, little jealous. I got it a bit. But uh, <laughs> so, uh, well, first of all, we have a little bit of an icebreaker here. Uh, we have a little bit of an icebreaker here on the show. Uh, just to people get to know you, if they don't know you yet, uh, we like to ask, uh, what is your first memory or the thing that got you into pro wrestling? Um, it's actually been really weird because I, I kind of grew up in professional wrestling. Um, my dad was actually, uh, he used to buy fundraisers for his uh, fire department in Pittsburgh and he used to promote the events. So I was two years old when he uh, started promoting his first events, not as a promoter, but he would, like I said, he'd, he'd buy the event and just sell the tickets, and then he'd work closely with a company called uh, ASWA, which was uh, Gino Rocco, uh, who was a Pittsburgh local. But uh, I was around it, and, and from that point, uh, I was always fascinated with wrestling that wasn't on TV. I was always more obsessed with what was in the magazines and, and what I could, you know, research and what I could find out. So uh, I wasn't really ever the biggest you know, WWF or WCW fan. I was just always obsessed with wrestling in general and trying to, to, you know, find something better. So I've always really had an obsession for, you know, worldwide international wrestling, which, um, you know, which pretty much ultimately led me to where I was today, uh, where I am today, because. I've always really been interested in the you know Mexican and Japanese scenes, so uh, I can't really say I have a first memory. It's always really been you know just part of my life, and uh, I'm sure some of your listeners probably know my older brother is Corey Graves. So when I was a uh, you know nine or ten year old kid, I used to travel to indie shows with him all over the Northeast United States. And uh, I developed the name Little Sam amongst a lot of the wrestlers. And, uh, yeah, it's just really been, you know, every aspect, every avenue of my life as a child. So there's definitely no real first memory. It's, you know, defined who I've been since I've been probably two years old. Absolutely. And, and like I said, in that uh, discussion we had uh, with, with your dad, uh, it was really, really great to hear how supportive he was uh, for you and your brother, and obviously getting seeing the great success with you guys right now, currently. I mean, just uh, coming up the day after hearing uh, uh, Corey Graves on, on on the Royal Rumble was pretty cool, right? Uh, so, I mean, can you talk a little bit about that support that your dad your dad had for you guys, uh, kind of getting into the business? Uh, my dad's always been probably a bigger fan than me and my brother were. Uh, I hate the term smart mark, but I guess if there would have been one in the 1960s or 70s, my dad would have been that guy. You know, he had an obsession of wrestling, you know, more so than your average person. He had the magazine collections. He was watching, you know, every variety of wrestling he could find all over the country. You know, he was really, really into it. And, you know, I think it was it was a different game when he was younger. He couldn't just become a wrestler. Uh, I think if he would have had the opportunity, he surely would have. But, you know, just like any father, he wants to live vicariously through his children, you know. And it's always become, you know, a, a... family events you know even with my sisters and my mom as well 
you know, we used to go to the Civic Arena five or six deep, you know, and, and everybody would just enjoy the show. My mom knows more about wrestling than 90% of, of the indie wrestlers in wrestling today, you know, and that's just, just from her sitting back on the couch, you know, and paying attention, you know, whether it's my dad and everybody watching a pay-per-view or if it's me watching my, you know, obscure Japanese wrestling from the 70s, mm-hmm. you know, my mom has a general good appreciation about it. Uh, it's just... Uh, the, the support they've had, they've always wanted to see their kids do well. And I think my dad even mentioned in your interview, he looks at it almost like sending a kid through college. You know, if, if a kid wants to go to be a doctor, you know, dad's going to support him go, to go to med school. Well, there's no real college to become a pro wrestler. So my dad kind of, you know, opened other avenues for us to, to become, you know, professional wrestlers and get us trained and, you know, ran some events to help us get some more experience and exposure. So, I mean, he's been there through everything, and to this day, like I said, he's always trying to find you know new exposure, trying to help support me and my brother, you know, in whatever it is that we do. That's awesome. I, w- w- one thing that stuck out for that interview for me was uh, when he was like, he was like the he was like the softball dad, right? Supporting you guys too. Yeah. yeah. So awesome. Uh, and, and let's say you're you're you know obviously doing great stuff down there in Mexico. Can we talk about a little bit of that path? Obviously, you've had uh, I believe a turn in WWE what? developmental and what? and can, talk about what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That, that path to to how you found yourself in Mexico. Um, obviously, you 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 had a, a turn in WWE uh, uh, developmental. Can you talk about how you ended up down there? I actually worked in Europe for five years mm-hmm. in a place called All Star Wrestling which in my opinion is pretty much the last wrestling territory on earth. Uh, it's Brian Dixon. who has been running wrestling shows for 45 years. He doesn't do anything on the internet. He doesn't care about Twitter or Facebook. He literally just runs wrestling shows, you know, and, and it's, it's an old school wrestling territory with some of the best wrestlers in the world that you've just never heard of because they're more worried about wrestling instead of, you know, selling themselves on the internet to, to internet companies. So I worked there for five years, but that place was unreal because we had a uh, a revolving door of talent. You know, everybody wanted to come work there, and we had a lot of the up and coming, uh, you know, indie stars like you know Kevin Steens, El Generico, as they'd be there. But at the same time, you'd get wrestling legends. Gangrel was there all the time. Uh, PN News. Uh, we'd get Mason Ryan. Uh, anybody who's been anybody, Juice and Ligers wrestled there. I mean, it, it literally is the number one company in Europe by, you know, miles because they run over 200 shows a year. Uh, me being there, I've been able to make a lot of contacts because there's always be Mexican wrestlers coming through the doors. So two of my real good friends were uh, Supernova, who is uh, who was with AAA, and then Angelico, who's now with, AAA, uh, with Lucha Underground. Both of these guys forever kept inviting me to Mexico, just saying, hey, come, come down, hang out, we'll do a couple shows and we'll see how it goes. And they always had confidence that I was going to succeed. So after three years of, of hesitating and wasting time, I actually came down here just to hang out for a couple months. And the opportunity just, you know, grew so fast. I got invited to work with uh, CMLL. Uh, I debuted in Arena Mexico on a Friday night in the main event, which is you know, virtually unheard of. Uh, as far as getting a major league push in Mexico, it doesn't really get much, you know, better than what I've received. So I've had a ton of luck. Uh, And again, I I think, I I wouldn't even call it so much luck. I've had a lot of experience. You know, wrestling 200 matches a year in England, you know, clearly you're going to be ready for the position when it comes up. So coming down here, all the bosses were able to see, wow, this guy's good at what he does, which is why I was invited, you know, to be a full-time member of the roster, you know, only being here one or two days. That's great, and, and and obviously you know your your persona down there. Um, I will probably butcher uh, 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 the um, El Rudo de las Chicas down there. Can you tell us a little bit about how that developed? And please translate that for for us layman non Spanish speakers. El Rudo de las Chicas is actually uh, translated literally probably the the villain for the women. <laughs> and it's just because generally all the villains down here are, are, you know, they all wear black. They're all, you know, a lot of demon influence or, you know, heavy metal, rock and roll influence. There's no pretty boy heels down here. And mm-hmm. it's not really been a thing for them. So, uh, you know, when when I came down there, they asked me if I was face or heel. 
And I told him I was a heel, and they just lost their mind. And said, Are you kidding? You're, you know, you're a good looking blonde American. You should be a babyface. I said, No, I'm on my Rio de las Chicas. And they loved it. You know, they, they grasped to that, and then they just, you know, they ran with it. And because I am the only one with that sort of uh, persona, you know, again, it's something they can feature, and it does stand out. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. It's just the life I've been able to live down here for the, the mainstream attention. And from day one, you know, I've, I've really come into a major league position and, you know, the, the being, I'm almost sold as a international sex symbol down here in Mexico city. <laughs> you know, I've been featured on TV shows. I've been, you know, I, I've done it all. And, and it's absolutely incredible. Just the experience because of, of, you know, being a, a foreigner in a foreign land. Absolutely, absolutely, and of course, again, as we're seeing in the pictures, if you guys are on video or anything like that, uh, this uh, this flag has been making the rounds on social media for, for definitely. We're about a week into the official uh, uh, Donald Trump uh, presidency, and uh, and you you are sporting a for those on audio a, a, a an American flag with a, a big Donald Trump face on it, and and uh, proudly displaying that as you come out there. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? That, I mean, uh, to me, that's just pro wrestling 101. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, I've been, you know, a part of wrestling as long as I can remember. And I, I've, anybody that knows me knows I absolutely hate new professional wrestling. I feel like somewhere in the last 20 years, we took a left turn when we should have gone right. And now wrestling's become an absolute joke. You know, it's it's not wrestling. It's just acrobats and garbage. But, you know, in my opinion, you get true to life, you know, 1985 Memphis wrestling heat, of course you're going to bring out something with Donald Trump here in Mexico. (laughs) So, you know, it was something that I just, the first thing I did was I just got a picture of him airbrushed on my tights like Rick Rude used to have. So, you know, that was something that kind of, you know, it came and went and people got a kick out of it. But once he won the presidency, I said, screw it, I'm buying a flag with his face on it. Mm -hmm. And the, the reaction couldn't be better. Uh, it's it's genuine emotion. It's genuine heat. People are actually offended. People actually, you know, it's it's something I've never experienced anywhere in my life before. You know, I've, I've never seen it in a WWE capacity. I've never seen it, you know, anywhere as as far as a fan. You know, I've watched countless hours of professional wrestling, and you know, anything in this modern era, I can't even think comes close to the genuine emotion that it invokes down here in Mexico City. So I'm definitely proud of what it's done. You know, it's it's definitely dangerous. You know, I've been in situations where people have gotten really heated. Uh, they're constantly throwing their beers at me, and you know, somebody's willing to sacrifice a beer. You know, you know how angry they actually are. It, it sounds like you're going to the good old days. I've been watching a lot of old wrestling with some of the projects we've been doing here, and like the '80s and back. Like we just watched a video from this like '74 of the Cleveland riot, right, where they're getting people so worked up that like it might be. It might be tough for the heel to leave the building, you know, in one piece. For instance, is is, is it mm-hmm. seem to be? Is it certainly seem to be getting on that level uh, uh, down there? Is that is that how uh, into it like the Mexican fans are? Well, yeah. When I work for CMLL, it's it's very very professional. We work at Arena yeah. Mexico and Arena Coliseo. We have you know countless security and staff. Uh, I'm not really ever too concerned there. You know, you're inside a barricade. It's a professional situation. There's police everywhere. But when, you know, uh, it's really weird how the contracts work down here. You, you basically, you work for CMLL, but then you, you represent the company on independent events. So I travel around the country to do independence. And those are some of the shows that are a bit sketchy because, you know, you're in the country and you get, it's the same thing wrestling in West Virginia or, you know, Montana. You get some country bumpkin hillbillies that don't leave the house much. You know, they're drunk off their heads and they see some American coming to their town telling them they're worthless you know, you really get some, some hatred and some, uh, it's, it, I've been in some sketchy situations where it's come off, you know, pretty, pretty, uh, not violent, but, you know, I, I feel like if I wasn't as wise with my words as I am and as good as diffusing the situations as I am, I feel like it probably could have gotten pretty heavy. Or the fact that I, you know, if I wasn't six foot four, two fifty, I think a lot of more people would try their luck. That definitely helps out, certainly. Um, recently, you also had a bit of a homecoming here with the uh, International Wrestling Cartel in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, it was great to see that. And again, I, 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 you know, hearing some people uh, uh, call him by your nickname there, 
Uh, it was really cool. So yeah, your family definitely came out in force. And it was uh, um, great to see you take on uh, Chris LaRusso for the uh, Super Indie Championship. Can you talk about, a little bit about coming back and, and uh, you know, kind of getting back to, to work in your hometown? Uh, it was just awesome. It, it was one of those things where it was my idea because I hadn't wrestled at home for I think three years, mm-hmm. and you know clearly when you get the more the more success you get, the more people want to you know be a part of it. So I just knew right now there'd be a ton of people that would like to come support. You know, a lot of friends that I haven't seen, and I'm constantly on the go. And uh, I've been really lucky. I, I haven't taken a vacation in eight years because wrestling pays for everything I need to do. You know, everywhere I go, everywhere I've been, you know, wrestling's paid for it. So I figured, hey, why not? Let's try to, you know, go home, see the family. But instead of getting a vacation, why don't you know, talk to a promoter and get that to happen? So I never actually knew Justin Plummer. I knew Norm Connors and uh, and uh, Chuck Chuck. Roberts. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Chuck Roberts. But uh, <laughs> they were always good. They were always yeah, Chuck Roberts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they were always good friends of mine. So. I obviously mean, had that reputation. I just kind of threw it out there, and me and Justin worked out a really good deal. I came up there for him, and it was actually a blast. It was great to see everyone. I uh, had a fun match. Uh, it wasn't fun. I, I should have I should have been able to take the Super Indy title back to Mexico with me, but you know he's he's a good little wrestler. Uh, we've had fun. I've known him for years, Chris Larusso. So it was just good to be there in front of a public, uh, uh, my Pittsburgh public, my fans and, and my friends and family and everything. Um, and then I actually, uh, a buddy of mine, I'm sure you were there when Chris Jericho came out. He actually came to see me. Uh, that was fun. It was good having him him come out. Uh, they came to Mexico the week before, and I told him that uh, he had the same interview segment in Pittsburgh. So I said, hey, I have an indie show that night. Why don't you come hang out? So he, he said, ah, I don't know about that. I don't like going to indie shows too much. And then he said, yeah, dude, I'm coming. But he didn't even tell me about the ring announcing thing. So that was a bit of his own surprise for me. So it was cool. It was one of those special nights that I think the people of Pittsburgh will remember. My family will remember for sure. But uh, it was definitely a neat little, little night in Pittsburgh. And it was definitely cool because it was the holiday season. And, you know, it was nice to be home to see family and and do the thing. That's awesome. It was great to see that and, and see that energy as well. Uh, great. So, hey, we have a couple questions to close up uh, the segment for today. Uh, first of all, we like to know, and I know you got a busy schedule, but what um, if not if you're not what wrestling are you watching, or is there anybody out there that's really got your attention uh, these days? Uh, here in Mexico or all over the world? Uh, wherever you're watching wrestling, what 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 has kind of got your kind of got your ear and, and eye right these days? Um, there's to me, I feel like there's a, a, a bit of the, in the United Kingdom, there's a bit of an underbelly right now. The UK is very hot. There's a lot of guys that people are watching, but there's certain guys that people aren't watching that they should be watching. One in particular named James Mason. Uh, he's actually one of like the last, uh, era of the world of sports guys. Uh, in my opinion, he's one of the best wrestlers on the planet. Uh, I feel like if people actually knew as much about wrestling as they claim to know, he would be on every one of these internet super shows because he is better than everyone. But because you've never heard of him, people aren't exactly banging down the door. Uh, there's a guy named Rampage Brown. I think the world of, uh, he is another British wrestler. Um, down here, there's just, you know, an insane amount of talent. And it's, it's such a part of life in Mexico. It's not even, uh, you can get a 16 year old kid that just comes to train that blows away most American pro wrestlers. You know, yeah, it's a different game here. It's a sport. People are really involved in it. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I'm not the biggest fan of new professional wrestling. Uh, it's very hard to find somebody that catches my eye. Uh, there's a guy in North Carolina named King Shane Williams that I think is fantastic. A guy in Florida named Frankie Siazzo is really good. Uh, I have a very unique flavor in wrestling. I think, you know, like I said, it's being done wrong. There's too many guys doing super kicks, wearing kick pads, doing moonsaults. You know, that's what wrestling become, and that's not what wrestling is to me. You know, I think it's a guy, you need characters, you need, you need, you know, a strong fight, you need a strong character, a strong presence. And there's just not too much of that going around right now. So, uh, yeah, I hope that helps. I know it sounds kind of kind of mean spirited, and that's not really the intention. It's just, you know, like I said, I have uh, I've come from a different segregation of wrestling. You know, I've, my dad was running shows when I was a kid. You know, when there's a reason why 
you know, in 1995, an indie show was drawn 2,000 people, whereas now it's drawn 200 people. Right, exactly. Uh, all right, and, and also, I usually ask what's the best and worst thing about indie wrestling, but I don't want to say what's the best and worst thing about working in Mexico as a wrestler? The best thing about it would be the crowd energy uh, and the full-time schedule. You know, like I said, I, I'm, I'm a full-blown celebrity down here, which is awesome. You know, I never really thought a kid from Pittsburgh would end up, you know, I can't walk down the streets without taking pictures and signing autographs, which is cool. And the audiences here are just absolutely unreal. You know, they, they love to go nuts. In the United States right now, we kind of have this problem where the wrestling fans kind of try to make the show about them, you know, and don't watch the show. They want to, you know, chant and be sarcastic. Whereas in Mexico, they truly appreciate what they're doing. And then, you know, they want to yell as loud as they can at the bad guy. And they want to cheer as much as they can for the good guy. So the energy levels are just through the roof. And the fact that I'm staying busy, you know, two or three nights a week, I have wrestling shows all over the country. You know, I'm, I'm in a national, international market. You know, uh, we work closely with some of the best wrestlers in the world. You know, I'm, I'm in here with Blue Panther and the Ultimo Guerrero. These guys are unbelievable, you know. So that's, that's probably the, the best aspect. Uh, the worst aspect uh, would probably be the traffic. Mexico City traffic is an absolute joke. Um, there's a lot of things about being here that just make you miss home. Uh, cultural things, not the wrestling things. It's just, you know, being here and, and missing certain aspects. You know, the, the, the certain, the, the best aspect of Mexico is the freedom, but the worst aspect is the freedom because, you know, people are just, you know, out of their minds. There's a little bit less structure, less, less, uh, you know, coordination for everything. So, there is things that make you miss the United States. So the best things would be, you know, what I said, but the worst things are definitely just cultural things, you know, things you miss about the United States. But that's not just Mexico. That's any country you live in. Miss, or live in. You're always going to miss mom's cooking. <laughs> of course, definitely. Um, all right. So if we're um, in, in the United States or uh, some other countries, I know we have some international uh, listeners out there. Uh, where can we catch you, uh, especially in CMLL? Like, uh, what are kind of, uh, where, 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 where can we find you other, is, like, is YouTube the best option at this point? The best thing to do would be to stay, uh, follow me on Twitter at, uh, at Sam Elias, uh, 89. And that has all my upcoming events. on it. I'm always staying pretty sharp on when and where I'll be, uh, in Mexico, but, um, 95% of the CMLO events at Arena Mexico or Arena Coliseo, Puerto La Guadalajara, they're all streamed live on CMLO.com. Nice. So if I have, say, for instance, a Friday night, you'll see that, that it's on Friday night, and I will advertise on my uh, on my Twitter that, hey, you can watch this match live tonight on CMLO.com. So that's that's probably the best thing to do is just you know follow me because if you check CMLO.com, you know, they have – uh, 15 to 20 shows a week and I'm clearly not on all of them. So, you know, the best thing to do would be follow me and then when you want to see me, you, you just check out CMLO.com. There you go. I love I love that they, the you know, between uh, uh, being able to watch CML online, uh, New Japan, things like that, I love that the barriers have completely broken down in, in, in international pro wrestling like this. Well, that's, that's another thing that, about being here that I'm really happy about is CMLO has a working relationship with New Japan, mm -hmm. and that's been a, a really strong goal of mine for years. And, you know, everything seems to be pointing in the right direction that hopefully I'll be able to, you know, work out something with them in the next you know, year or so. But, you know, I, I work with a lot of their guys, their trainees, and, you know, everything just seems to have its own natural progression. And as far as I'm concerned, you know, nine years into a professional wrestling career, I like to think I'm doing better off than a lot of guys that have, you know, come this far in nine years. Absolutely. And there's definitely um, a lot of familiar faces coming through uh, CMLL. Even just looking at the website right now, I'm seeing friends of the show that some of you guys have been maybe following from, from here on this podcast, like Ray Rowe of Ring of Honor, um, do come through there, just like you kind of see them all pop up in Japan as well. Uh, so that's really cool to see that. So the world's getting smaller, and, and there's just a lot of great wrestling in it. So thank you so much, Sam, uh, Sam Adonis, for, uh, for joining us here. Um, oh, somebody's uh, in the chat room. Uh, Matt's out there saying that the Fight app has uh, most uh, um, will post CML shows a couple times a week as well. So that's another outlet you guys can keep an eye out for uh, to see see what's going on down there south of the border. So, all right, thank you so much, Santa Doss, for uh, I, 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 oh, go, go ahead. 
I appreciate you having me, man. I appreciate it. Hopefully, I didn't come off too too mean spirited. But uh, <laughs> no, I appreciate no. being here. And anybody that can check me out, uh, I'm a classic '80s wrestling heel. And hopefully, you know, I can I can be what you guys are missing here in pro wrestling. We need more of that. We definitely need more of that. Thank you so much for joining us. Please check him out online. We'll be uh, sharing stuff as it pops up as we see it on our social media over at Mayhem Show on Twitter. And uh, please check out everything WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to the show. Share the show if you're like, hey, you need to check this guy out. Um, uh, please share the podcast with your friends, with other wrestling fans that need to be exposed to a little bit. Something different than what you're seeing on the TV on Monday night every week, definitely here in the States, right? Uh, so go do that. And until next time, uh, d- definitely. support our guest and support indie wrestling. <laughs> Sick, 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 you know how I act now If you got a problem, come and see it from a back down Act wild, steady sip and check This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com